Thanks for watching and today I would like to solve a neat problem involving complex numbers. Namely, find all the numbers z such that absolute value of z minus i equals absolute value of z plus i. And the nice thing about those kinds of problems is there's usually two ways of solving it. One, the algebraic way. Two, the geometric way. So let's start with the algebraic way. So suppose since z is a complex number, let's write this in terms of real and imaginary parts. So suppose z equals x plus iy. And then what do we get? Well, the left-hand side becomes x plus iy minus i. And then the right-hand side becomes x plus iy plus i. And then, again, let's split this into real and imaginary parts. So this becomes x plus i times y minus 1 equals x plus i y plus 1. Now if you use the definition of modulus it has a bunch of square roots so to get rid of the square roots let's just square both sides. Now what is the definition of absolute value squared just like the Pythagorean theorem it's just this squared plus this squared so we get x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals x squared plus y plus 1 squared. And the nice thing is the x's, they cancel out. And then what do we get? This squared equals this squared, which gives us two possibilities. Either y minus 1 equals y plus 1. But the problem is if you cancel this out, then you get minus 1 equals 1, which is incorrect. I know, laughs in z too, but here, let's keep it complex. So this doesn't work. Or the other possibility is that y minus 1 is minus y plus 1. And then what do we get? We get y minus 1 equals minus y minus 1. This cancels out, so y equals minus y, so y equals 0. So what can we conclude? If z solves this equation, then z must be of the form x plus i, 0, and x. In other words, and I know it seems we're just using different symbols, but what is this saying? The only solutions to this equation are all the real numbers. So in other words, there are no uh, uh, complex numbers with a zero with non-zero imaginary part that solve this. And in fact, you can check that this in fact works because, well, what if z is real? Then what does this become? Then on the one hand, x minus i, that becomes square root of x squared plus minus 1 squared and becomes square root of x squared plus 1. On the other hand, absolute value of x plus i, that becomes square root of x squared plus 1 squared, and that's square root of x squared plus 1 squared, or x squared plus 1. And indeed, both of those things are the same. So in fact, the only solution to this equation are the real numbers. Now, that was the algebraic way of solving it, with on, which unfortunately doesn't give you any insight into why the solutions have to be true. But fortunately, there's also the geometric way, which is very, very neat. Because again, let's look at the, at the equation. Absolute value of z minus i equals absolute value of z plus i, but in the complex plane. <coughs> then, well, i is here, and minus i is here. And notice what this is saying. Well, another way of writing this is simply z minus i equals z minus minus i. So you're really asking yourselves, which points have the property that they're the same distance away from i and the minus i? So you're really asking yourselves, which points in the complex plane have the property that they're the same distance away from i as they are from minus i? And well, if you remember some high school geometry, consider the segment um, 
connecting I and minus I, well, the set of points which are the same distance away from those two, that's what's called the perpendicular bisector, or in French, médiatrice. No, I like that word as well. And so basically, all you need to do is find a perpendicular bisector from the points minus i and i. Well, you all you do, you take the average between the two, which is zero, and consider the line that's perpendicular to this. And notice, interestingly here, that perpendicular bisector is just the real line. In other words, it's the set of all x, where x is real. And in fact, then, again, by properties of the perpendicular bisector, you can actually verify that, indeed, any point on this line is the same distance away from i as it is from minus i. Or, for example, even here. So it, it's very, very neat. So all right, I hope you like this little complex number excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.